My guest today is Dr. Stephen Cabral, who's a board-certified doctor of naturopathy and founder of The Equal Life and the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. After almost 20 years and over 600,000 pages of research study completed, dozens of certifications in the natural health field, over a quarter of a million private client sessions, and a doctoral degree in naturopathy, Dr. Cabral's knowledge, experience, and passion are at the top of his field. In today's episode, we talk about his international best-selling book, The Rain Barrel Effect, that gives you the secret to finally getting well, losing weight, and feeling alive again. Welcome to Lifeology. Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, being here on the show. I am really looking forward to this. When I was even reading the intro, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to find out why do I keep <laughs> gaining weight? <laughs> what is going on with me? So I know my listeners today are going to be very excited about this. Now, you just moved here from, from Boston down to West Palm Beach, and I just miss you because I just moved to Miami. How are you liking the, the Florida lifestyle? Well, coming from Boston, I mean, it's dramatically different in terms of the weather. <laughs> so at the end of <laughs> August, it already starts to get cool in uh, Boston and Maine, where essentially I spend most of my time. So being down here and getting another two, three months of summer, it's difficult to complain about that. Yes, it certainly is. I remember, and we'll, we'll switch over to your book in just a second, but I remember when I first moved down here, I was like, oh my gosh, James, why are you so sad at Christmas? And it was, you know, there are all these Christmas lights and all this, you know, but it was so tropical. And I was like, well, it doesn't feel like Christmas. And so then I, w- I had to take a, you know, a quick reframe and be like, James, you're in a tropical place. You're in shorts right now. You're the beaches right next to you. I think you're okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, there are different ways of looking at it for sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now, you were not always this professional in front of me. You went through a, a really difficult time in your life. For tw- was it 20 some years? You struggled with an illness. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so essentially, I wasn't necessarily a healthy kid. I had allergies, I had uh, asthma, I had gut issues, I had insomnia. Um, I, had a, I had a lot of issues around foods that we didn't really know back then. I mean, I grew up in the mm-hmm. 80s and 90s, so it's just it just wasn't as well known. You know, there's no internet. Yeah. Nobody's looking these things up. Yeah, exactly. And I was eating the typical standard American diet. You know, I was drinking like orange juice and eating some fruity pebbles and cereal, you know, for breakfast mm-hmm. and a sandwich and cold milk at lunch. And I, I again, my parents didn't know. They hadn't been taught. We weren't taught in our necessarily culture or schools. And so what happened was, though, by the time I was 17, I had already taken about 3,000 capsules of amoxicillin from my dermatologist for skin issues that put me on it twice a day. So I had so many gut-based issues that eventually my body just broke down. And at 17 years old, my senior year of high school, um, I ended up with uh, a lot of autoimmune issues. I ended Mm. up with Addison's disease, type 2 diabetes. Uh, essentially flu-like symptoms and brain fog all day mm-hmm. long, and it was debilitating, especially at 17. I had to stop playing sports. Um, you know, I was doing well in school. I had to leave school for about six weeks, almost didn't graduate. It was a really bad scene. Um, and I spent the next 10 years of my life really trying to put my body back together. And, um, you know, I, I always say that it was a very difficult time. I can't say that I wish I went through yeah, it again. Bet. However, it made me who I am today. And because of that, I am actually grateful for the experience. And now I get to teach yeah. other people how to overcome all sorts of health issues, weight loss issues, uh, anti-aging issues as well. That's amazing. I, I, I can't even imagine how difficult that was for you. How did you find the resilience to say, okay, well, doctors and whomever else may have said there's really no cure for me. How did you decide that, well, I'm going to find this? How did, what, was, what happened within you to realize that? You know, it, it, is, it is interesting when you look at it. Why do some people continue to push on mm-hmm. and why do some people give up? And, and so don't get me wrong. I mean, I was, there was massive periods of depression and anxiety that I was never going to get well again. I mean, I was sick for a long time and then I would start to get well and then I would relapse. And there was just something in the back of my mind, you know, during the really difficult periods, just saying, you started to get some results. There must be something to whatever it was that you were doing. Let's see if Mm -hmm. we can do that again and then maybe add something else in. So it was just pure stubbornness. You know, it was just, I was unwilling to become a victim of my disease and say that this is all that life was going to present to me. I Mm -hmm. I felt like I had more that I wanted to give in life and I wasn't going to be able to do that without any energy and with massive brain fog and allergies and insomnia all day long. Yeah. Wow. And obviously, we're so grateful that you did it. Now, you traveled to many different countries, and you learned so many different things. Before we get started on that, though, what is a functional medicine doctor? And what, what is this about naturopathy? I mean, I know what it is, but I think sometimes people, there's so many terms, medical terms out there that sometimes people are like, what does this even mean? 
Yeah, absolutely. And so the, how it came to fruition was I, I met a lot of great natural health doctors along the way, meaning I went to mm-hmm. two dozen conventional medicine doctors and specialists, endocrinologists, GI, you name it, ear, nose, and throat. And they kept just putting me on pharmaceuticals and pharmaceuticals. And I, I really wasn't getting well. I was just masking sure. the symptoms. And I said, I want more than this. I actually want to be well again. I want to feel like myself and not a, a medicated zombie. And there's yeah. a time and place for conventional medicine. So I'm not saying there's not. But when you have a chronic disease and multiple diseases like I did, you're just masking the symptoms of your okay. fatigue or allergies or whatever it might be. So I started to see more natural health-based practitioners. And one day after reading her book, I met my mentor, Dr. Pete. And Dr. Pete was a naturopathic doctor, and she studied Ayurvedic medicine, and she also knew about genetics. So all of a sudden, at 26, 27 years old, I'm learning now how to put everything together. I'd already learned so much over a decade. She was the one who basically made the connections, and she said, you need to go back. She, I mean, I had read thousands of books. I had, I had already done so much I study. I was already a uh, certified nutritionist, certified strength and conditioning specialist, personal trainer. She said, go Man. back to school, finish your degree. And that's what I did. And then I ended up doing internships overseas, studying Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, bioregulatory medicine, et cetera. So what a functional medicine doctor does um, is someone that looks at the same spectrum of diseases that people have except they want to go layers deeper. They want to keep asking why until they find out Mm -hmm. why did you get an autoimmune disease? Why do you have that? Why do you have Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, insomnia, food allergies, bloating, gas, brain fog, migraines? And you keep asking why until you find out the underlying root causes, and there's always an underlying root cause. So what we do is instead of just doing blood work at a lab, we send people at-home lab tests to look at their toxicities, and to look at their deficiencies. Now, I'm kind of oversimplifying it, but we look at candida overgrowth, SIBO, parasites, et cetera, and also all Mm -hmm. their deficiencies in terms of vitamins, minerals, omega-3s. Wow. You said so so many things there, and I'm sure my listeners are like, oh my gosh, I I want to learn more. (laughs) So with that, with with everything you learned, I I love the integrative aspect of it because, you know, the tagline for lifeology is where one simplifies and transforms their spirit, mind, and body. And from conventional medicine or Western medicine, will often, and you're the expert here, often it can be look more at the symptoms as far as treating the symptoms as opposed to the root cause, where Eastern medicine will look at the the root cause as well. So you take the, you integrate it, that's probably why it's called integrative medicine, integrate both hemispheres, Western and Eastern, and create that paradigm to not only treat the, treat the cause, but then also the, the maintenance of that so people don't return back to the, the symptoms that they were experiencing before. That's exactly correct. That's a good way to put it, is that it's combining the wisdom of ancient Ayurvedic medicine, the wisdom of Eastern medicine, but combining that with state-of-the-art functional medicine. So we still do the lab testing, but we make it easier because you can do it right at home through urine tests, saliva test, uh, blood drop, like a finger drop, um, Mm -hmm. and and other modalities based on what the person needs. And then you're looking, though, not just as the symptoms. The symptoms are important because they show you the outlet of the dis-ease of your body. But we're also trying to figure out your past of how did you get here? And then what we can do is we can take your story combined with your lab data and actually devise a personalized Mm -hmm. protocol for you to then work on the underlying root cause imbalances, not just the symptoms. So we don't just give turmeric for inflammation. It's great. Turmeric's fantastic. Curcumin is nice, but that is not working on an underlying root cause symptoms. It's simply still working on inflammation. Where did the inflammation come from? That's what we're asking. Interesting. It almost reminds me of like a holistic version of the TV show House. <laughs> he really gets yes. to the root of things. In the- <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> but it's like that no. in the real world. Exactly. So it's a real yeah, world sure, version sure of that that isn't solved necessarily in 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. It would be great if it could be. Now, what is Ayurvedic medicine? Ayurvedic medicine is the oldest form of medicine in the world where all other forms of medicine sprung from. It literally translates to the science of life. Uh, it was developed in Kerala, India, and then it uh, moved to the north of India, then to China along the trade routes. Uh, it then moved to ancient Greece, Rome. So everyone kind of has a foothold in Ayurvedic medicine. And what it does is it looks at the uniqueness of the individual. So it actually looks mm. at body types. It looks at um, seasons and and how the body works as one holistic being. So 
Um, that, and that's, that's really the root, again, like I said, of all forms of medicine. If you even look at pharmaceuticals right now, when I was over in India, I was there multiple times studying and interning mm-hmm. at clinics. Uh, there were major pharmaceutical companies looking at all the plants and herbs that they use to then try to use extracts to turn into pharmaceuticals. About 50% of all drugs actually come from plant-based extracts. The most famous example is a statin for cholesterol. It comes from red yeast rice. So you can actually use red yeast rice while you're finding out the underlying root cause imbalances of the high cholesterol instead of you know, someone using a statin. And again, I'm not telling people to come off their statin drug, yes. but what I'm saying is a lot of these have their roots in actual plant-based medicine. That's fantastic. Wow, that's, that's really amazing. What would what happened for you when I said, you know what, it's time for me to write this book. Uh, this and this is your international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect. What what happened in your life and in the world around it said everyone needs to know more about this? Yeah, it was it was never a plan necessarily to write the book, but I always wanted to share the information. I essentially made a, a promise to myself. It kept me going. When I was young and I was in my early 20s going from doctor's office to doctor office, I basically said, if I ever figure this out, I'm going to share it with others. Like That was always the goal because it was such a miserable time of my life and I didn't want other people to have to go through what I went through or maybe just at least ease the suffering and shorten the timeline. You know, If it took me 10 years, now it will take people three to six months to get better. It doesn't happen overnight, but it will certainly happen in you know three to six months. So when I opened my second location in Boston. We were doing 20,000 appointments a year. We had seen over a quarter of a million wow. people. We had a wait list six months long. And I knew at Amazing. that point, it was not uh, scalable to see the people that I wanted to be able to see and help. So like you, I, I went to podcasting. I shared, I have a daily podcast. I shared my message oh, wow. on my podcast starting in 2016. And then I wrote my book uh, just a couple years later that actually details how people get sick and unwell and overweight and begin to age at a faster rate. And then I give people my de-stress protocol of how I help people in private practice. And so that was kind of like, hey, here's everything I do. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to talk one-on-one, but I would follow this as a good first step. Wow. I know. It's just even hearing you say that, I, I truly am getting excited because I know many people that I personal in my personal life that I would like to send this book to. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'll read the whole, the whole title for people. So when they're looking online, it's called The Rain Barrel Effect, How a 6,000-Year-Old the rain barrel effect, how a 6,000-year-old answer holds the secret to finally getting well, losing weight, and feeling alive again. Wonderful branding. I think that's fantastic. What would, you know, we were talking in the pre-call there about just toxins overall. You know, I'm, I'm down here now in Miami. There's, I ride my bike to, to the gym every morning. And in the last couple of days since I've started that, I already have all these allergies. And so I'm, I'm now on a certain allergy medicine. But, you know, things like that, our environment creates all these toxins for us. What would be, you know, and I guess it depends on where in everybody's lifestyle, but what, what is the main reason why people continue to have these toxins in their life? Yeah, so what happens is we, we don't necessarily come into life toxin-free. And toxins are, are environmental yeah. toxins. And most common that people know would be things like flame retardants that puts on furniture and car seats mm-hmm. and uh, even mm-hmm. baby mattresses. We have pesticides, especially on the dirty dozen foods. Those are the ones that are sprayed the most. Uh, we've got things like triclosan that people might not know about in, in toothpaste. We've got fluoride in toothpaste, which might help with cavities, but certainly if you consume enough, it actually can lower your thyroid and, and hurt other parts oh, wow. of your organs as well. So what, what happens is over time, what I call it is it fills up the rain barrel. And then what happens mm. is when you get to the top of the rain barrel, then your body can't, it can't remove the toxins as fast as you're putting them in. And then when that rain barrel overflows, like mine did at 17, then you start to get the symptoms of disease or you actually get diagnosed with the disease, but it's filling up over the years. And so the way out of that is to begin to understand what your toxicities are. Could be heavy metals, 
could be plastics. I mean, the average person right now leaves their house being exposed to 126 different chemicals, shampoos, conditioners, bath soaps, cleaning products, you name it. And we don't even know that they're in our drinking water. They're all around us. And no one dose is going to be a big issue. But over time, as they begin to accumulate and you begin to age and you get less sleep and you have more stress, your body can't, it doesn't have the same vital reserves as it once did. Mm -hmm. So our job is to improve our vitamins and minerals and our nutrient capacity while at the same time eliminating a lot of those products that fill up our rain barrel. So a lot of it, okay, so a lot of it, so I understand this correctly. So a lot of this can be more environmental. So right now, as I can look around my house with things you just said, I'm like, okay, I, like you said, I, I use a lot of those things this morning. So just the awareness of that and time and place for everything. But if someone's looking to remove some toxins from their life, it may be important to revisit what they have in their house. The other thing though, it makes me think from a psychological approach is just when it comes to our core beliefs, what we believe about ourselves over time becomes our reality. So if I have all these experiences that happen in my life that keep telling me I can't do this or I'm not good enough here or that, it's like the same type of thing with that rain barrel effect, if I may use your analogy, is my thought beliefs keep saying this over and over and pretty soon I have a nervous breakdown. And obviously there's no judgment there because we all have life stressors. But it makes me really think about that same concept is we all have something in our life. And if we're not aware of it, just like your concept of the environmental toxins, it's the same thing when it comes to our mental health and how we perceive ourselves and what our functionality is as well. So it's a really interesting intersect there. 100%. And so when I I talk about my de-stress protocol, it's diet, exercise, stress reduction, which is huge, rest Mm. in your sleep-based protocols, your toxin removal, your emotional balance, your scientifically backed supplements, and your success mindset. So when you look at stress, emotional balance, success mindset, three parts of my program are really dedicated to the mind. Because what happens is your brain is attached to to your body through your nervous system. And your nervous Mm -hmm. system innervates all of your different organs and hormones. So there's actually science behind this, meaning your psychology absolutely affects your physiology, and your physiology, your body, does affect your mind as well. So, Mm -hmm. and it's it's, a lot of it's done through the vagus nerve. And so what happens, though, is Mm -hmm. when you get stressed, you produce more cortisol. You produce more norepinephrine. When you do that, you begin to actually lower your immune system. This is clinically studied with lowering the white mm-hmm. blood cell count. And also, uh, in the chron- meaning like chronically stressed, not in the short term, but chronically stressed over time. And it also begins to lower your thyroid. So now you start to get the cold hands and feet. You get the weight gain, the water retention, the thinning hair, um, brain fog, all of these issues mm-hmm. that are attached to low thyroid, low metabolic rate. And what happens is you go to an endocrinologist then and they say, oh, you have low thyroid. Let me put you on thyroid hormone. Uh, but the problem is yeah. it was due okay. to the stress and the adrenal-based stress that caused then the lower thyroid. So we have to keep, again, always asking why did this happen? And there's, again, always an answer that we can go back to. That's that's fascinating. And, and exactly, because if there's not enough variables that are discussed or, or looked at, then of course, a specialist is, will look at their specialist. I know when it comes to psychology, and obviously you're the expert here when it comes to the fight or flight effect, when, when we do have that chronic stress, and like you said, the cortisol levels and norepinephrine are, are, are inflamed, we have more than we should. To me, my understanding of that is whatever your body thinks the stressor needs, if you're gonna, it's going to move all the blood to, let's say, my, my legs if I need to run, you know, if I need to run away from something. So however it, me- however it measures um, what the stress is, it moves the blood flow towards that. So it makes sense that everything would move towards that to remove yourself from wherever the danger is. And so therefore, if it's chronic, then once again, the regulatory aspect of it wouldn't be consistent because your body still thinks it needs to flee or fight. Is that correct? That is correct. So you have two parts of the autonomic nervous system. You have the uh, sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight Mm -hmm. or flight. And then you have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. And that's the rejuvenating part. So with chronic stress, you're just pushed more towards the fight or flight survival based state for more of the day. And that means then when you're in Mm -hmm. that state, your body is not then in the rest, repair, digest. So now all of a sudden you can't absorb food as well. You get more bloating. You get more gas. uh, Your nutrient reserves go down. Just like you said, the blood flow is moved more to the extremities for fight or flight. Your body Mm -hmm. begins to break down sugar reserves that you don't even need because you're not actually Mm -hmm. in a fight or flight based situation. So now you start to gain more weight and you end up with type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure from the stress and the arteries. And so all of this, though, has that common background 
of the higher levels of that sympathetic nervous system stress. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we then look at is, okay, we need to look at both lifestyle, psychology, and actual nutritional supplement protocols to help all three at once. Because first of all, you need to be able to get in the mindset of, you know, wanting to change your lifestyle and also work on the the mind as well. Mm -hmm. And the way that you do that is just to get yourself stable first. So it might be things like ashwagandha, L-theanine, a product called Adrenal Soothe. Mm -hmm. It might be magnesium. And then you say, okay, I'm a little calmer. Now I can work on, well, meditation, going for a walk, doing biofeedback, you know, working with a, um, yeah. a psychologist, psychiatrist like yourself. So all of these things, they work together. There's no one best thing for any human. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's really yeah. a system that you want to work with. Which I, once again, I'm so happy that you're on my show because that is something that is incredibly important because if it is a one-stop shop for one person or and once again, people, the specialists are incredible. So that we're not, definitely not speaking negatively about them, but it is good to look at the integrative aspect of it. When I used to work in, in hospitals, I was a treatment team coordinator. And so with that, I would get to coordinate with all the different specialists and we would all come together and work as a team to talk about the patient and to really create a, a plan that was very holistic. And I think that's some things that sometimes people forget when, when they do go to, to, to a, a practitioner and it, they don't have that integrative aspect of it. So it is, once again, fantastic people, but it is good to also look at other areas of your life. And so I'm, I'm really glad that you do this as well. And your book, do you talk about the different... Um, supplements as well that, that go along with your protocol? I do. What I talk about more though is a foundational based program to get okay. started. So we start people with what's called a 21 day equal life functional medicine detox. And that helps to rid your body of as many of those stored toxins as possible. Now you can test for these. Uh, there's a lot of obviously science behind that, but a lot of mm-hmm. people just want to say, what's the protocol I can do so that I start to get 80% of that results without having to do individualized testing. Or after oh, that, they start to feel so good, then they may do the individualized testing and find out what their specific nutrient profile is so they can get the right protocol for them. And, and so there's no right necessarily way to do it, but you do need to start at the foundation. So you can't just say, oh, I'm going to take a curcumin or I'm going to take a CoQ10 and then mm-hmm. things are going to be good again. So you yeah. do really want to start with that functional medicine detox to teach you about intermittent fasting, anti-inflammatory diet plan, meal timing, and to help with what's called phase one, phase two liver detox. I know we don't have enough time for that, but basically it's your body being able to eliminate these stored toxins at a much faster rate to help you feel better. Wow. I know I'm incredibly excited about this. Uh, Like I said, especially moving down here, it's a different lifestyle. And so I'm going to definitely be reading this book. If my listeners want to find out more, if my listeners want to find out more information about you and to purchase this book, The Brain Barrel Effect, How a 6,000 Year Old Answer Holds a Secret to Finally Getting Well, Losing Weight and Feeling Alive Again, where would they find all this information online? The main spot is my website, stephencabral.com. And it's Stephen with a PH. Uh, There you'll be able to find the book, uh, which is the rain barrel effect, as you just mentioned, my podcast called the Cabral Concepts, mm-hmm. and then you'd be able to find the lab testing and functional medicine detox, whatever may work for you. So that's the main hub. And then my Instagram is Stephen Cabral, uh, and I put out daily videos and tips there as well. Awesome. Well, Dr. Cabral, thank you so much for being a wonderful guest on my show today. My listeners also note that if they cannot find this information in any other place, simply go to the show notes at jamesmillerlifeology.com, and I will link you with Dr. Cabral. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate yours as well.